Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the next step that we get to do this. Thank you for protecting us, my God, um, during the season of this hurricane season. Thank you for allowing us to manage handling the issues that we're receiving this week, that we apply to our daily lives and we're receiving the issues that we have to increase our love for you and that you can give us the best that we have. And just also with that anxiety that you humble us, my God, as our theology is to increase the church. God should be standing for the Lord and for your people, my God, and we just want to stand for something in your Bless us and grace us, my God, to be able to receive and to minister to you, my God. All those who are viewing online and however they may hear this message, I just bless them and receive and assure them to you. Amen. All right. So, uh, shalom, everybody online. Shalom, everybody in the house. Um, we going in. We're going to continue um, teaching in this series um, that we started about the law. Because like we said last time, a lot of people um, have a lot of misconceptions about the law. Uh, we talked about um, one of the brothers last time and um, his whole take on the law. And because of the things that he was putting out there, it was confusing people. And... Going back to what I, I ain't rehashing all that last because that's dead and gone now. Um, but shalom, sister. <laughs> um, but we stressing on um, having proper understanding. So that's the reason why we're going back into this and we're going to um, completely understand what law is, what all the definitions are that are tied into what we actually reading. And hopefully through that we have better understanding. So, um, and I'm not going through this whole teaching all over again. We're gonna go. We're gonna skip over some of this stuff. But, um, but I got to start with this line again so you get y'all to understand this. For the mystery of lawlessness doth already work. Only he who will, who now who let it, will let until he be taken out of the way. Now what that means is this is Shaul writing, right? Now if you go read in the King James, it says iniquity. So remember, we're talking about definitions. So the definition of the word iniquity is lawlessness. All right. So he said, so you read it. What he's saying is the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he that let let it will let until he be taken out the way. Now, we've talked about different teachers in the past about even um, misconceptions about quote unquote rapture. Right. And how people think that the ones that's taken, like you read, you, you watch Left Behind, watch all these movies and that supposedly like the, the, the righteous are taken and, and the unrighteous are left. But when you study scripture, that's not that's never the op that's it's always the opposite. Right. Um, uh, in Noah's time, the wicked were what? Taken. The righteous were left. Right. Um, going back to. Um. um you can go. Uh, you can go back to Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. So even though um, Lot got outside of the city, the wicked were destroyed or taken, and the righteous were left. So that's always been the case. So if you go read um, what Mashiach was actually saying, he was talking about how he, you know, he says he sends forth the reapers, and the reapers are the angels, right? He's talking about a soul, a soul go forth to sow seed, right? And talk about some fall on. Um, uh, uh, shallow ground, some uh, fall among thorns, some of the fowls of the air eat them, and that kind of thing. And then he talks about um, he talks about the same parable again, and he, and he compares it to being the end of the world, right? And he, and he compares it as being wheat and tares growing up. And he says the wheat and the tares grow together, right? And he says at the end, he sends forth the reapers, and the reapers separate the wheat from the tares. Now, when he, he says this, he says, but when they go, they go first to gather the tares. And he says the tares are gathered together and they're burned. Right? So think about when it's a, um, even if you have a garden, like a lot of things in Hebrew based off what they did, like their culture, right? We talk about the language, we can get to that a little bit later on today. So when you have a garden, right? And you have um, 
uh, insects or whatever that's going to destroy your crops. You don't remove the crops and leave the insects. <laughs> right? You understand? You kill the insects and leave the crops. So going back to this whole thing, so when it says the mystery of iniquity, iniquity um, only he who let will let until he be taken out the way. That means that the people who practice lawlessness, they're going to be taken. They're going to be destroyed. Right? So saying all that to say, um, so you get the whole concept. So when we talked about um, cause the, the dude's argument and everybody's argument, Christianity's argument, is that the law is done away with. And we can't follow the law because the law is unrighteous. Because they won't say, well, if I said that, they're like, I didn't say that. They go, I'll say, well, you said the law is a curse, right? That's the definition of a curse is something that's evil, right? So you're saying that it's evil, okay? So I'm, I'm going to rehash this, and then we're going we're gonna to jump, okay? So we're not getting the Malachi right now. We got time for that. And I'm going to rehash these two scriptures. This is Isaiah um, uh, 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and for light darkness. Now, what people don't understand is, as far as the faith in general that we have all you know, been in and grew up in, um, that's what we've been taught. We've been taught that good is, e good is evil and evil is good. <clears throat> right? So, for instance, give you an example. You, you know, we, we're going into um, Feast of Tabernacles. We got a video that we're going to post about Tabernacles. We're getting that ready. So, all the feast days, right? If you go try to keep a feast day, somebody's going to come up to you and you tell them that you, you doing, you're having Tabernacles or whatever you're doing. They'll be like, why are you doing that? We're like, well, you know, it's in the scripture and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's the law. You under, under that, they bring you under bondage. That's a bad thing, right? You know what they're going to do? They're going to go and they're going to celebrate Christmas. They're going to celebrate Easter. So they celebrate um, holidays that they know. Because if you, if you can sit down and break it down to them, you can tell them the whole history behind everything that's involved in that. And they're like, well, I'm not doing it for that reason. Right? right? Now, you know that the feast days ain't got no idol. Go ahead. Yeah, there's nothing attached to the feast days. They're pure and holy, right? But this holiday they celebrate, you can tell them, you can prove through, um, through history the history and everything else that it's a pagan um, holiday, but yet they choose that. So they, go ahead. You know, um, I could be off, but this always been my theory. This going back to the rapture and it's mm -hmm. tying in with this too. You know, when the ball really starts rolling, I mean, right. it's, 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 it's rolling now. Right. But when the stuff really starts happening that does not line up with what Christianity is teaching us regarding, you know, the last days. You know, right. The, um, the wicked will be uh, left behind, you know, left right. behind and, you know, so when Christian people or when believers start seeing or not seeing what they've been taught, they're not going to know what to look to because as far as they know, this is what what they know is coming from. Right. So when the Bible, so when the um, Bible says, you know, that um, I, I'm paraphrasing, but no one will be able to find me or, you know, like, right. I, I think that's probably what he means is the fact that they will know where to look. Right. And overlook this. Right. Because as far as they know. This isn't what's what's in here is not happening, right. which it is, right? You know, um, and I think that's how, and it's a scary thing to look back and say, "Wow, I, that could have easily been me." Yeah, that could have so easily been me. You know, um, so I used to think, "Well, when the rapture comes, if I am left behind, then at least I'll know to okay, really get, get myself together, really get my life right." Right. You know, it's like you'll. You'll have choices, but in reality, I feel this true. Yeah, you have a choice, but it's just it's so different from or so opposite from what the system is teaching. Right. That you mark it off as something. Well, oh, that's that's Muslim. That's Jehovah's Witnesses. That's this. That's you know. When really those religions have more of the truth than what we do. You know. I mean, I hate to say it, but they do. They have more of the truth than what we do. Um, or yeah, yeah. It, it's, and this again, this is not an indictment. You know, we've all been here. I, I was looking at teachings from years ago. You know, today, and I was like, man, I was all pushing the same, exact same stuff. But what you do is, it comes a time um, when you start to learn because of study. That's why Scripture says, um, uh, "Search the Scriptures, for in them." You think you have eternal life, right? So what Mashiach is telling you is be in constant study. Like, um, so you have to constantly um, be in that mode of trying to find out what truth is because the word is a mystery. Right. 
right? Remember, um, even Mashiach when he walked around with the um, disciples, he he would go to go to places and he would only speak in parables. And the disciples were like, why 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 you keep why you keep speaking in parables? And he told him, he said, it's not for them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but for you. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because you follow me, so you're supposed to be seeking these things out, right? Um, for the but for the other people, he says it's not for them, right? So he said he's intentionally speaking in ways that they wouldn't get it unless they went and they sought it out, right? So that's what it is right now in in the, in this faith that we've been been about. Only people that's really searching these things out are, are understanding these things. And why why I'm starting with this before we go back into the definitions is because what they don't realize is, um. What we've been a part of, and I'm, I'm only saying this for edification, people. I'm not doing this to be scare tactics or nothing like that. But what we've all grew up in, technically, is Satanism. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Because if you know anything about Satanism, it's this dude. He's a great, they call him the, um, he's the most famous Satanist of all time, Aleister Crowley. You ever heard of him? <clears throat> this was, online, anybody, go do research on Aleister Crowley. Okay? Aleister Crowley. Um, I'm terrible speller. Man. <laughs> it's like, but A L. Nah, I ain't even gonna try. Yeah, just Google Jay Z, Alistair Crowley to pop up. But um, so the Satan, you know, this religion being satanic, it is. Because think about what Satan told Eve. He would be just like God. It wasn't anything evil. It wasn't right. anything. Well, it was contrary, but it wasn't anything outside of you know those terms of godliness, you know, right? Him being like him, that's what Christianity teach, right? You know, um, it's still using those uh, familiar words, it's just, you know, those titles, and <clears throat> still using some of the truth. What's we'll see what you're gonna find out is oh, my bad, go ahead, bro. No, you're fine, no, go ahead. Um, but yeah, so what you're gonna find out is that see, you can't sell any any lie without some truth. OK, and see, this is the danger <clears throat> about the scriptures, because what people don't understand about the scriptures is um, the scripture, even though it's one thing, it's all also a bunch of individual things. And what I mean by that is precept upon precept, line upon line. So what does that mean? Every single individual precept in in the text has to do whatever it says that it would do. And so sometimes I'll give you an example. You know, like, you know, saying you might grow up, you know, somebody in the hood, they they, they push, but then <laughs> they they spend um on Christmas or whatever holiday, they come there and buy everybody all kind of stuff, right? And then they always got money or somebody else to do something else that you know that's crooked, but they go and they tie that money. They give money to the church. And because of that, they keep on getting money. So in their mindset, they're like, man, I'm blessed. I got all this stuff. You see what I'm saying? So why? Because they, and they could just be because they tithing. They're doing all kinds of other things wickedly. Right. But the precept of tithing has to work. Right. Regardless of what people think, feel like you should or you shouldn't. It works because it's, it's, it's the word of the most high. So if you use it, it's going to work. So you using this precept. And you getting all these these good things is coming from it. So you think, man, I'm in right standing. I got to be righteous because I have these things when you wicked and you're going to bust hell wide open. You see what I'm saying? But because each precept has to it has to work within its own lane. Now, when you apply all of them, they, they all work together, too. But I, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, reaping and sowing. Reaping and sowing is a um, is a uh, it's a precept in Torah. Right. But the Hindus have their own version of it. They call it karma. They say so they do this. They practice that precept. Now, they wicked. They pagans. But they practice that precept. And because the um, how the word the scripture says that there's not a single word that can that can go out from the most high. that can return to him void right. without accomplishing whatever it's, it's set to do. So they practicing that um, that precept and they they seeing results from it. But they'll but they still go. But they still pagans. They, they still going to hell. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the danger in that. Right. It's the danger in Christianity. So um, it can even go to the point where. You could you could be in um, a place that's completely backwards but you can get saved in that place and you say well how's that how's that possible how can you be how could you um, find the most high in, in, in absolute um, um, wickedness why because <laughs> remember the parable he says a sower go forth to do what sow seed and where does he sow the where does he sow the seed at some place on stony ground some among, among thorns Right. Other places where it shoot up fast and it's, it's what um, eaten by the what, fowls of the air. So he's telling you that this, the seed Now we know the seed is the, is the Ruach. Right. And it's, it's, it's the word. He goes when he says it's the word. Ruach and word. Same thing. Go back definitions. So um, 
saying that to say it's been planted in these places where there is no ground, no like um, fertile ground, or places where there's thorns. Thorns mean things that can choke you and kill you. So you get in this word, so you might find out that like. The first step, we keep talking about the first step. Once you find out those things, to repent and be baptized. What does scripture tell you to do? So you could uh, you could be in a place where they teach you, man, you need to repent, you need to baptize, you know, whatever. You need to receive the ruach. So you could be repentant, you could um, been baptized and receive the ruach, but you're in a place that's teaching you wickedness. Right. And so you practicing all this wickedness, right? But you but you have done this why? Because you're seeking it out. That precept has to fulfill itself. Because if it don't, then the Most High will be a lie. He's never a lie, right? So this is the reason why you can get the blind leading the blind. It's a very dangerous thing. So that's why um, Shaul says that, um, like people talk about, I was talking about how the brother, about, he, he told me, he said, man, you know, you made things difficult, man. The word is simple. Shaul kept it simple. Paul kept it simple. I said, well, well, Kepha said his, his um, letters are hard to understand. <laughs> right? So but if you go on, Shaul also says this. He says that um, these people that teach these things, it says they make merchandise of the simple. You hear what I just said? Go ahead, go and read it. Shaul says that they make merchandise of the simple. The simple minded, they deceive them. They um they they uh like a better term, they trap them, right? Um they they suck them in. But why? Because they don't understand. Right? Remember, it says what? It says, my people die from what? Right? Because they reject the what? The law, then he what forgets their children. You understand what I'm saying? So when you reject, he's telling you, if you reject law, you never reject knowledge. So we in this mindset, we grow up in this place, we tell you, you need me to stop? Because I can stop the teaching and give you a whooping if you need one. Okay. Yeah, I said it online. It's better rise for the child. Anyway, um, <laughs> say that to say this. That's the process. Now that got me sidetracked. But anyway, um, Going back to this um, concept of, what was I saying before, they, before I got sidetracked? They rejected the law. Right, right, right. So you reject the law because you rejected the Torah. Law means Torah. You would, remember, people get caught up in the word law. We have these negative connotations in our minds about law. Torah right? too, because that's so, you know, when you hear Torah, and even now I'm still trying to get my, you know, when I hear Torah, I think about Judaism. Right. I don't know right. if I'm wrong, but it, that's what's in my mind, so. Remember, going back to definitions, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Um, Torah comes from the word Mara. It means the teaching or teaching, right? So that's the concept. It's the teaching of the Most High, right? So um, the whole Bible, not just the Old Testament. No, it's the, it's the whole Bible. Because the, the whole thing is what? Teaching, right? right. right? But we call it, you know, we give it the, the, the division. We talk about the um, Torah and the Pentateuch and that kind of stuff. But um, but really, it's all, all of it is the teaching, right? So, but saying that to say this, um, this is the danger of being in the places where we are because you can apply any precept it, and it's going to be true and it's going to work but you could be in the midst of nonsense like you could be in the camps you don't find out who you are you you know you went back to keeping the shabbats and all this stuff and then some camps say well you don't need to be baptized it's, you know it's it, blah, 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 blah. it's um they believe it's uh washing up the water by the word yeah. which is a complete misinterpretation of that scripture so we can go and we can show you what um when um, peter was uh not peter but philip was witnessing to the eunuch and they're going around and then he stopped. He told him, say, hey, see, there's water. What does it mean to be baptized? You see what I'm saying? The word baptism, it, they don't understand it. It's Torahic, right? The word, um, a priest would go and they would have to wash themselves in, in, in the bronze label before they can enter in the temple. And it, remember, the scripture says, lest they die. So this is why Mashiach says, he says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not, damned. Right? So you can't. So they're going around telling people you don't have to do this. You're going to be damned. <laughs> this is the truth. You're not going to make it into the kingdom if you haven't been um, ba baptized or, you know, like we use the baptized Greek. But in, in the in Hebrew was mikvah. Right. You haven't had that mikvah in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. If you haven't been down in him, you're not going to be raised. According to just your own words. You won't be raised in glory with him. Right. So, again, so you again, you in that, you don't find out truth. That's good truth. That's a good precept. That's good teaching. But you have to constantly seek out the whole t the whole book. Right. It's um, or you can be on the flip side. You could be in the church. And you, again, like I said, you could have been done. You could have been down. You could have done that. You could have received the Ruach. And then they're telling you to, then to be lawless. Yeah. So now you've become lawless because that's what they teach you. So it's the same thing about having that seed that's planted in that ground amongst thorns. Right. And, and the, um, she said the thorns, they spring up and they choke you. 
What? So you don't, so you, so you die, right? So going back to that, so we're on to them that call good evil and evil good. And I ain't getting to this too deep because for time, because we're going to try to finish some of these definitions today. I'm just going to give you this one scripture. They're going to chip. We're going to skip down. So again, we're talking about definitions. So the first thing you got to say, if he says, whoa, um, to them that call good evil and evil good. So we need the definitions of what's evil and the definition of what's good. Okay, so here we go. Psalms 19, verse 7. Thy law, the law of Yah is what? So it's not cursed. It's perfect. Okay, it's perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of Yah is sure, making wise or simple. By the way, when you when you're talking about the new the NT, New Testament, or whatever people want to call it, the Brit Havashad and the other the other half of the book, right? That is the testimony. Right? It's, not, it's it's a it's Torahic because it's teaching, but it's a it's a witness. That's what it is. That's why it's like you know it's records of what happened. Now if we go back and study the scripture, and this is what people don't understand, it's a law done away with. We can show you where in the scripture it talk about how they how they um how they continue in the law and the prophets. So remember, there was no New Testament during that time. So everything that they studied was from Torah. Right. So anyway, Romans seven verse twelve. The wherefore the law is what. And the commandment is what? That's Shaul talking. But they say Shaul say that the law is a, law is a curse. <laughs> but they go good. So anyway, Proverbs 6, verse 23, 23, 23, 23, the commandment is a what? And a what? The law is what? So the law is light. So the law is not evil. But they tell you the law is a curse. So you already seen what are they doing? They call it good, evil, and evil, good. OK, and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Um, Isaiah um, 8 and 20, the law and the testimony. See that? But I'll tell you about the law, the Torah and the testimony. Right. If they speak not according to this word, it's because of what? Did y'all catch that? So the people that's teaching you, they teach you. Most people going to teach you one or the other. Right. There's no light in them. Right. They're going to teach you. Oh. The testimony, which is the testimony of what? Testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. Testimony of Jesus Christ. We can flip to Revelation. And they're going to say, these are those that have the right to the tree of life. Those that keep the commandments and had a testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. In other words, who had a testimony of Jesus Christ. Right? There you go again, the law and the testimony. You get it? So Isaiah's prophesying that same thing. He said this to the law and the testimony. If they speak not according to that, they have no light in them. Right. It don't get no more straightforward than that. So if somebody's telling you testimony and no law, ain't no light in them. If they tell you law and no testimony, ain't no light in them. Got me. Right. So that's the way it supposed to work. So anyway, we went through all this other stuff. Um, all that stuff was just crushing the stuff that he was saying in his statements. We're not getting into that. We're going to try to finish some of this today. But we'll start here because we'll get to back to what, I'm, what I was about to say. So. We just in the beginning of this, and we just talked about this in the last video. But for people who don't know it, the word no, that's not the verse. Not the verse I'm looking for. All right. So yeah, I got to keep down. The word iniquity means lawlessness, and I will read this. Somebody go to um, I read it anyway. I'm skip down for time. All right, First John three and four. Whosoever com committed sin does what? For why? So sin, the definition of sin is what? Okay. So again, going back to real simple, this is first grade understanding. If there ain't no law, can there be any sin? Because sin is the what? All right. So let me, let me read y'all something real fast. And then we're going to get back into this. This is Zechariah 5. Now, in, when we read in Revelations, they talk about Mystery Babylon the Great, right? They call her the mother of all harlots, right? Um, she is the system that's, 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 that's controlling the whole world, right? We know that, she, that she's a religion also, okay? So she's controlling the whole world. Zechariah prophesied about her. Let me show you something. This is Zechariah 5. Then I turned and looked up my eyes and looked, and behold, a fly roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I see a flying roll, and the length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. And he said to me, this is the curse 
So they want to tell you what the curse was. Remember, they try to say that the law was the curse, right? They going to now Zechariah is going to tell you what the actual curse is. OK, then he said to me, this is the curse that go off, uh, forth over the face of y'all. Have y'all got put it up yet? Y'all Zechariah 5. OK, read it. Read it loud for me. For everyone that still shall be cut off. No, Ze Ze Zechariah, my bad, 5, verse 3. Okay. All right. Then said he unto them, this is the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that still, that still shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on the side according to it. All right, so I'm, now I'm keep going. I'm, I'm going to have you read again. And it will bring forth, saith Yahweh, Yahweh armies, Yahweh of armies, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, into the house of him that swear falsely by whose name? By name. Now we can, I can fast forward to to Matthew, and the, and um, Mashiach says, many gonna say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out um, demons in Thy name? Then I mean, and done all these wonderful works. And he says, what? Depart from me, ye that do what? Lawlessness. You got me? So I'm going to keep going, remember? This is the curse. We're talking about the curse right now. Because everybody's talking about the law is a curse. We're going to talk about the real curse. And it shall remain, remain in the midst of his house, and he shall consume it in the timber thereof, in the stones thereof. And the angel talked with me and went forth, and he said unto me, Lift up thy eyes now. So he said, This is the second thing. Check this out now. And he said, What is it that goeth forth? And I said, What is it? And he said, This is the ephah that goeth forth. What is it? Y'all know what the ephah is? The ephah is a basket. Okay? It's like a, you know, like a weave basket. So that's basically what it is. He said, this is the basket that go for. He said, moreover, this is their what? Resemblance throughout like part of the earth. So uh, the whole earth, whatever that's in this ephah is what's covering the whole entire earth. Okay, here we go. And behold, there was uh, lifted up a talent of lead, a talent of lead, basically what is somebody a lid and the talent is the weight. Okay. Lift up a talent of lead or of the lid of the lead. And what was in it? A woman? Just like in Revelation? So the woman in Revelation, what is she called? Mystery Babylon? Okay. This is the woman that sit in the midst of the ephah. So it's a woman in this basket. Okay. Check this out. And he said, this is what? Say it loud, y'all. They got to hear y'all. This is wickedness. This is wickedness? It's also curse? And now it's wickedness. Okay. And he cast it down in the midst of the ephah. So he's, they see this, he see, look at this basket and you see this woman that's in it. And then, um, then Zechariah's like, this is wickedness. So they slammed the, um, the lid back on it. Check this out. That's the weight of the mouth, lead upon the mouth thereof. Then I lift, I lift up my eyes and look and behold, there came out two women. So it's a woman that's in the basket. Now coming out two other women. Okay. Check this out. And the wind was in their wings and they had the wings of what? What is a stork? An unclean animal. So these were demons. Okay. And they lifted up the ephah between what? So they lifted her up. Something that's lifted up between the earth and the heavens, that means it's something that's um, the, in, the, in the mindset. That means something that's grand, something that's adored. It's lifted up. It's high. You see what I'm saying? It's the thing that everybody sees, something that's in the sky, something that everyone looks up to. You understand what I'm saying? Who well, says the, so? This woman that's in this basket that Ze, that Zechariah calls wickedness, and it says this is whoever this thing is, it covers the whole earth. Okay. Then said I to the angel and talk with me. Where does these bear the ephah? In other words, where are they taking the ephah? Where are they taking the basket with the woman in it? Read that eleven verse for me. And he said unto me to build it in house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established, and set there upon her own base. Y'all know what Shinar is? Shinar is the ancient word for Babylon. Mystery, Babylon, the great, the mother of all harlots. This is wickedness. This is their resemblance over the whole earth. Now, I'm going to ask you a question right now. What is What are the two biggest religions in the world right now? Christian. Yep. Which is yeah, the same thing, <laughs> and and Islam. Islam. We not we don't we haven't got these teaching up yet, but I, one day we're gonna crack that open. Islam came from Catholicism, right? So 
so technically Catholicism. She's the mother. You got me? Is Islam is like the daughter. And all these different denominations. They all came out of her, right? Every last one of them. No matter what denomination that you are part of, you can in in the Christian circles, there's gonna be something that and, and look, this is what we do, and I'm not even I'm not knocking I'm not coming after Christians. I'm, I'm hoping that somebody watch this video that they might understand this. No matter what element of that, that of um, Christian faith that you in, it all came from um, uh, from from Catholicism. So all of it. That's why you still go to church on Sunday and not keep the Sabbath. That's why you still celebrate these pagan holidays with no guilt attached to it. Right. You know. So. And all of that, what you're gonna find out is that the deception is that what we do within her is we'll do something different and we think that's separating her from yeah. from us so like you celebrate you celebrate holidays we don't celebrate the holidays so we so we fixed it right but then we believe in lawlessness you know um you don't so you don't believe in lawlessness i like this now you you keep the sabbath seven day Adventist, right but then you turn around and you believe um you you have some type of lawlessness so you believe that um right and you believe in um you can eat all this abominable things that go along that the bible tells you not to do you still can do them so, but what you're going to find out is this. Across the board, no matter what Christian denomination is, it is, this is what they're going to have one of the of these three core beliefs. One, they're going to believe the law done away with. And you that go, you know, for instance, I'm going to give you an example. I grew up apostolic. We didn't, we didn't do the pagan days. We didn't keep the feast, though. <laughs> we didn't do the pagan, we didn't do the pagan days. So, um, didn't do the pagan days. We believed that the most, we believed that there was one God. That it would, we, the whole thing about the Trinity, that Trinity was bogus. And uh, both of those are Torah. That's Torah. That's true. Both of those things are true. Still um, uh, worshiping on Sunday, all the pagan other stuff <laughs> that we don't think that's pagan because we didn't know that it was pagan because we didn't do the research to understand that it was pagan. You see what I'm saying? So then you got um, Church of God in Christ. Church of God in Christ, on the flip side, um, it's almost like that. It's kind of the same thing. Then you got Baptists. And everybody got like, well, I'm not doing this, so we, we fixed it. I ain't doing that, so we, so we fixed it. And we ain't did this. Um, so it's fixed, but you know what they all believe? Law done away with. <laughs> um, and that this is new way, right? In other words, Christ done away with, with the most with the most high wanted to do, and then we got this new way, and we all um a part of this now. So no matter and again, you can go you, Mormon, Seventh-day Adventist, uh again, Apostolic, Pentecostal, Baptist, um, Me uh, Presbyterian, Methodist, you just name it, whatever the one of the many 40,000 different denominations there is, they all believe that one central doctrine. And then most of them had the second doctrine, which is communion. Now, I ain't getting this too deep, but when you do your study, you'll find out there's no such thing as communion. Ain't no way in the Bible anybody had communion. Right. What they had was Passover. And again, I don't got time. I'll actually we can go read that scripture. And that night, the, the first thing that, that Mashiach did, he went to the um, disciples. He said, look, it's my desire to have Passover. That's literally what it says. It is my desire to have Passover with you this night. So they said, go prepare the room for Passover. So people call it the Last Supper. It was Passover. Right. So they went together on Passover and they all sat down to eat. And that's when all, everything that we know happened. But during the time of the Passover, check this out. This is how scary this is. That I, oh, I, we never got this. At Passover, Mashiach stops and he says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do as often as you do, you, you do this in remembrance of. So he told him, from now on, keep Passover in the remembrance of me. So you know what we did? We threw Passover away. Now think about it now. He's telling you, keep Passover, but now on, have it in remembrance of me. But the whole entire church world said, no, 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 we're going to do this thing called Mass. And then they said, no, we keep a communion. No, that's what Mass is. All right? So Mass is, we're going we're to take a drink offering, we're going to take these little wafer, wafers, you know, that, that, that uh, communion is a, the meal on, on, on a certain day that's, again, that's, that is Passover and all this other stuff. And um, which they got from the, from Roman Cap, um, Catholicism. They call it they call it mass. It's communion. It's the same same thing. So then nobody keeps the feast. Though no, keeps Passover, even though Passover was about Mashiach. Every aspect of Passover was about him. That's why they had a pass. You know why um Mashiach's legs weren't broken when he was on when he was on the cross because you can't break the Passover's legs when you kill it. <laughs> right? It's in the Torah. So that's why they get, they didn't break his legs. Remember when he was on the cross. He's about to try to um, um break his legs. Sit down, sit down. Um, they, they couldn't, he couldn't do it because why? Because it was because he was the Passover lamb, right? This is the reason why he was uh, also why he was crucified on Passover, 
<laughs> right? Because he, he was the lamb that was slain for the people, right? So it goes on and on and on and on. So, um, and, it, and it, it not only ties on with, with that, that part of Passover, but all the different, um, the rest of that. Unleavened bread. He was the he was the bread that was with, without sin. Sin is considered is um spiritual. Spiritually, it's considered to be like leaven, right? So he says he was without sin. He was the unleavened bread. So he was in the grave. Did he? Did he? He was. He rose from the grave, and he was the first of his kind. So they call it first fruits. Do so you understand what I'm saying? So that's the reason why we don't say this before. If y'all watching the other videos, that's why when um when Miriam see him, he's in the garden. Because the high priest on first fruits has a wave offering of a omer from the garden. <laughs> right? So all this is him. But no, everybody who claimed to worship him rejects that. Right? But he told them, do this in remembrance of me. Everybody got me? I'm, I'm getting on a tangent. But I'm trying to let y'all see how the mystery of iniquity. So some kind of way. We've, they've created a religion that makes you believe that you're following him by doing the exact opposite of what he did. <laughs> Christianity tells you to worship on Sunday. The scripture tells us that Mashiach it, um, kept um, Shabbat and it said it was his custom every, every Shabbat, right? Um, the scripture tells us that there's one Elohim. The um, Christianity is telling you that there's three Elohims. Um, uh, scripture tell you that the law um, Mashiach out of his own mouth he says not one jot no tittle will ever fail from the law unless heaven and earth pass away Christianity is telling you that it was done it was nailed to the cross <laughs> right <laughs> Christianity um, uh, 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 Mashiach kept the feasts we know we see even where he kept feast of dedication he was like, all kind of, like everything that was happening within the um, nation he was doing it but yet Christianity is telling you that that stuff has passed away and now you need to, you need to worship the days of the Romans so everything is the opposite. You understand what I'm saying? Mashiach said, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the, the house of Israel. Christianity is telling you that he came for the whole world. Yeah. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Why do they believe they came for the whole world? Because the word um, Catholic means universal. That's what it means. Catholic means universal. They call this the universal church. So everything that was applied to the Hebrews, they switched it and made it apply to everybody. Now, we ain't talking about that... Um, we ain't under that nonsense that they believe that people that that Gentiles can't be um can't can't um be grafted in and be amongst the people. They ain't what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the prophecies and the um in that concern Israel, they've applied it to everybody. Everything has been super hyper spiritualized, and then the the people of the book <laughs> have been rejected. Rejected, cursed. Right. We're not done away with it. I mean, right. But y'all see that I, I, I'm gonna get in this whole thing. But y'all get what I'm saying. So what you're seeing is that's what he said. He said this is the ephah that goes. This is wickedness, right? This is the the this is thing that covers the whole entire earth. Everybody believes this. So when you go tell somebody some about like, hey man, you know, let's get in the scripture. Let me show you where um, Christ said that that night they was keeping Passover. Oh no no no, we don't do that. That's, that's not what we do at our church. But but Christ said you, you know, and it, and this, you, you can go back. You be like, but the, but the word says. And then they gonna be like, well, we did. but the word says, you know, but the word, but but the word, you gonna go back to the word, and then they gonna be like, oh, you extremists, you keep talking about this, you know, the word this and the word that, and then you know that kind of thing. Ugh. So anyway, had to get that off my chest to try to explain um, why this is a, a serious teaching and why all this came from misunderstanding of definitions, right? Right. So anyway, so like we just said, if sin is breaking of the law. How can anyone sin if there is no law? Right? So if 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 the law was done away with, can the, the can Mashiach come back and punish people for sin? Wouldn't he be unrighteous then? It that'd be like, I told my son, um, you don't have to sit down. And then he get up and I go whoop him mm -hmm. because he got up. Right? They'll be like, man, he the worst dad ever. That's the, right. You see what I'm saying? So that's the concept. How is it? How can the most high judge the world because of sin if there ain't no sin? Right. Because remember, sin is the trans, sin is the transgression of the law. Right. So and partly that came because we've created our own definitions of what sin is. And I don't went through that before. Um, But I was just showing you these, these are symbols of anarchy, by the way, to go real quick. Anarchy, anarchy is the definition or 
uh, um, or state of a society without government or laws. That's what they're telling you. Matter of fact, and think about the hypocrisy. Like the brothers put the video, the hypocrisy of law keepers. You want to know some hypocrisy? You, you have a brother that live in your neighborhood. He might, he might be pushing. He might, you know, he might have three, he might have a couple of um, baby mamas. He might be doing this, that, and the third. You call him a criminal. And you say that, you know, he's a bad influence and he do this. Why? Because he breaks the law. Then you break all the most high laws and you say, I'm righteous. He's breaking man's law, right? You you break most high law and then you you claim that some kind of way that makes you that make you um holy. I mean, you see how how backwards all this stuff is. What well, to them that call good evil and evil good, right? So anyway, so that's anarchy. And ain't into all that because I really want to. I really truly, you know how I am. I be going on about this and then we never actually get nothing done. So saying that to say um. So anyway, let's 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 go ahead and start. And I'm trying to speed this up now. All right. So definition. Let's start with lawlessness. Psalms 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. So we know that iniquity is lawlessness, right? So what is the definition? I have acknowledged my lawlessness unto thee, um, which I have not hid. I have said I will confess my transgressions unto Yah, and, I, and thou forgavest my, um, the iniquity of my sin, Selah. In other words, my lawlessness, or my breaking of the law. Psalms 36, verse 3. The words of my mouth are iniquity or lawless, right? And deceit. He have left off to be wise and to do no good. So anybody that talk about um, being outside of the law, oh, I'm not under the law, um, he's not wise. He doesn't understand. Again, we speak to my basic understanding. For I, I will declare my iniquity and I will be sorrow for my sin. Remember, what did Mashiach say? He says, I've come... Um, what the you know the, basically declaring that every man do what repent repent from what repent from sin right so what is sin transgression of the law y'all get it <laughs> so he's trying to bring people back to that so that's like people believe and i have to keep saying this so that people understand this people think that they're like well you trying to be like one of them pharisees you're being legalistic like a pharisee they don't understand that the pharisees um didn't keep the law just like them right the pharisees had their own law and that's, so that's why Mashiach says this. He says, he said, full well, you reject the commandment to keep your own tradition. That's what Christianity is. A bunch of, they say, we did away with the law. Here's our new traditions. You understand know what I'm saying? So, and again, um, we keep moving. How long should they utter and speak um, hard things and the workers of iniquity boast themselves? And that's literally what they do. That's literally what they do. They come at you because you say, man, I'm trying my best to keep the commandments. And then they fight you over that. Now, what kind of mind will fight you over doing whatever? <laughs> what sense does that make? You know? Anyway, so let's keep going. Um, keep me from the stands they have laid for me in the gins of the workers of lawlessness. The way of Yah is strength and upright. But check this out. Destruction shall be for the workers of lawlessness. Y'all heard me, right? For the destruction shall be for the workers of lawlessness by mercy and truth. And we'll get to that definition of truth, which um, truth ties back to the word Torah. Get that in a second. Um, iniquity, which is lawlessness, is purged. I'm going to say it again. By mercy and truth, which is Torah or law. Lawlessness is purged. You get me? Why? Because Torah is teaching. Right. So it's teaching you how to do things properly. So by mercy and truth, iniquity or lawlessness is purged. And by the fear of Yah, men do what? Now I'm going to ask you a question. Why would you depart from evil if there is no law? <laughs> Bruh, if, if you, uh, ain't some people that's in church trying to do right or whatever. If it ain't illegal for you to sell marijuana, you're going to sell marijuana because it's big money. It's a, business, right? it's a business, right? But if you fear that they're going to what? Then you're not going to do it. Unless you, you know, you just, you know, some people just do it anyway. They won't get locked up. <laughs> right. Lawlessness. You get it? You see how simple this is? Right. So that's the fear. You can't fear the most high if there is no, if there is no um, judgment. All right. So it's just like your father. You're going to do a child tries his father. My son is my son is always trying me. My daughter always trying me until um until they realize that what I don't play. 
right? So they know I love them. They know I got their back and do everything I can for them, but they know I'm not going to play no nonsense. Well, so by me chastising them, right, they line up. Spread a rise, sport a child. So, but a father who chastises his child for no reason is an abuser. You understand? We're going to get how this is, if you think about it, this is simple, right? All right, Psalms 11, I mean, Psalms 119, um, 110 through 115. The wicked have laid, laid a snare for me, right? Yeah, I err not from thy precepts. You see that? So the wicked are the people who are trying to get you away from the precepts. Okay? Thy testimonies have I taken as a what? Heritage, right? For they are the rejoicing of my heart. <clears throat> have I inclined my heart to perform thy statutes sometimes? Right? Even unto the end. So he's telling you, even unto the end, the whole point is to try to try your best. It don't mean that you're going to do it perfectly all the time. That's, if, you, if, if the Most High meant knew or thought that everybody going to do it perfectly all the time, he wouldn't have put things in the law for the times that you messed up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And so now he even, he even uh, made it even simpler. He's like, well, you know, you don't even have to do that part. You just need to repent. Right? You don't even have to take the blood of bulls and goats no more. All you got to do is repent. Right? So uh, anyway, here we go. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law, I do what? Now, Christianity from day one is teaching you to hate the law. Right here, this is Dawid. He said, here's the law. Now, did, now Dawid messed up, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't Dawid kill somebody? Mm -hmm. Didn't Dawid uh, commit, uh, commit for, uh, get adultery? Yeah. Right? Taking dude's wife? You know what I'm saying? He did all these things. But he loved the law. This is what they don't understand. Well, you know, if you keep the law, you got to keep it all perfect. No, man. The word, the word keep, and to go back to definitions, it means to guard. Guard and regard, meaning that you look at it like this is it. Like, like, so I was talking to brother, he said, well, somebody came to me about, um, I was talking about keeping the Sabbath. And they're like, well, what if you don't, um, you had, you got to work on Sundays though. You, you ain't keeping Sabbath. I like, well, this is what you should have told him. The word, going back to the word keep, the word keep is regard, right? So you in captivity, right? And when they was in captivity, there was certain stuff they couldn't do because they was in captivity, right? But you regard the day of of the of Yah as being the day. So in, so whenever you can't not gonna be at work, you're gonna be there because you regard it as being the day. You understand what I'm saying? You keep that day. That's the day that you, you you keep it close to you. That's the day that's special to you. Like again, going back to like a, a child or your wife or your you know your girl, you 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 guard them and you regard them. So you 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 keep them close to you and you protect them, right? So you know you might not you might can't always be with your wife. But you, but when you got time, you going back. To, you, you're going to be with your wife, right? Um, not to throw you off, but uh, which law do we not keep? This is the question. Uh, so what, what law do we not? Keep? Law that we don't keep? Well, or which law was done away with? The well, um, now nah, that's that's kind of misconception. I will say this: what it boils down to is the law. It's a scripture that. That Shaul talks about, he's quoting Jeremiah. It's the law that was added because of transgression. Okay, so the law that was technically we can say it's done away with, but we do some study, you find out it's almost like more so it's on hold. Okay, it's a law of sacrifice, right? So, and but the law, I will take this. I will say this: the law that's tied into that is the law, the law of judgment too. When I mean my judgment, I don't mean judgment of like what we think judgment, like oh, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing what you're doing, but the, the law of death because of sin. So, <clears throat> with Mashiach, he died on the cross. He was doing both of those things at the same time. He was taking away the capital punishment for 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 um for law breaking, and he was um he was suspending the sacrifice because he was a perfect sacrifice to atone for the whole nation, right? When he returned, we're gonna go back and uh, restart it. I guess well, not restart it, but right? Pick up right yeah. Resume. Yeah, we resume, resume it. It, yeah. it ain't gonna be for us because the scripture says there'll be no more iniquity in Jacob. You see what I'm saying? So we're not gonna be sacrificing for because we sin or we because we transgressed. But it'll be it's certain things like um the sacrifices that they might do in a feast day. The sacrifices for the for the temple. Now, um when Mashiach returned and everything is set up, then the other nations they're gonna have to bring sacrifices in there. You will be the priest. You and whoever that's in the house of Israel, right? If you're in the house of Israel, you're gonna be a servant. To be a priest, and that's what we get into, um, get into later. But you're gonna be a priest, so that means that you you will be the one that's over all that stuff. You're gonna be a priest to the nations, 
So the, everybody that, that that's and it's kind of really hard to explain. It's a whole other teaching to get into. But once Mashiach returned, the people that that that's the people that join themselves, the um the, the scripture call it the companions. So all the other nations that join themselves for Israel and Israel going going to be in the land. Everybody else is going to be like it is right now. There might, might be people in China, might be people in um in uh, Tibet, might be people in Russia, might be people they still in their own places. But we're going to be in the land. So um the ones that join with us, they'll be servants in the land. But, we, but now people get get sideways when they hear the word servant. But they don't realize that when it's for instance, um giving a better example, um the president is considered to be a public servant. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So if you were worked in um in a if you work for the queen or the king, you at the highest level of anybody else that's in that kingdom, right? Joseph, Joseph uh, oh, uh, Genesis. Right. He was the second in command. He was still considered a servant. Yeah, he was right. Only one over him was Pharaoh. Exactly. So there'll be servants upon us, we'll be servants on the Mashiach. Right? So um, but the people that come from other nations, they're going to have to come and they're going to have to like feast days, they're going to have to come up and all that kind of stuff. If you read Ezekiel, it talk about how they won't have no no rain. They will, um, them people be punished if they don't keep them feast days. And if you read the whole book, it seems like that's the reason why they revolt at one point in time. Because you read in, um, in um, Revelations, at one point in time, Gog and Magog, they revolt. And they come up and they try to go to war with Israel. And so um, when, when, when Hasatan is released, because Hasatan going to be locked down for a thousand years. After that, he will be released. And scripture says he go to he go to Europe. <laughs> I ain't making this up. What the scripture says, he go to Europe and he gather the Europeans together and they come and they, and they try to um, take down Israel. God can make God. By the way, if y'all know, those are European nations. Um, also, Tubal, Javan and, and those, all the names of European nations. So say that to say, so um, that's what they do. But um, but the scripture says that um, that's what's going to happen. Once we're resettled, then there'll be the temple, the temple, the sacrifices in the temple will happen again. But it's not for us for atonement. It's not for us for sin anymore. Right. Right. So but but as for that. So capital punishment for for transgression, which is means because there's a bunch of things in the text that we do now. We would just have to, they have to put us to death. Like if they catch you, for instance, um. If some like you know right now amongst all of us we got all these people that you know some of us have um you know children out of wedlock, lockout that kind of stuff then you would have to been put to death right so but because Mashiach did that he did away with that capital punishment now all we do is repent you see what I'm saying so anyway so that's basically on um, the as far as the, we we call so, the laws on the way with I guess that um that's what that verse means when it says uh, there will be no more iniquity in Jacob no um if you reject I guess what Christ did for Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no yeah. more atonement for you. Yeah, right? um when you sin and sin willfully, in other words, when you become lawless and become lawless willfully, mm -hmm. um, there's no more sacrifice for sins. You understand what I'm saying? So um so that's that's the concept, right? So those two things, everything else is still in place. And um remember also when you're looking at the law, remember it's really the teaching. All right. So there's certain things that we call them precepts that, that are concerning the land, certain things that are concerning the temple, certain things that's concerning um, uh, leadership. I don't know why somebody's calling me right now. Sorry, everybody. It's pretty all right. OK, um, and I can't turn it off right now. We're in the middle of recording. <laughs> but uh. So um, those things are. I gotta figure out a way to stop this. Hold on a second. It ain't my phone, sure. Okay. All right. So saying that to say, um, you, you understand basically what's going on. So you have the um, dietary law still in place because you gotta re gotta realize why these things were in place. So the dietary law, people think that the dietary law was put there to keep you from eating shrimp. No, that's that's not what it was. The dietary law is not to punish you from keeping keep you from eating things. It's to keep you from dying, right? So, um, because those things are corrupt and they kill your body. So you're not supposed to defile your body. You're not supposed to defile your temple. Just like how you wouldn't smoke, you wouldn't smoke crack. You ain't supposed to be <laughs> be eating um, roaches, and that's literally it, it's a sea roach, right? So, um, crabs or spiders, 
They go on and on and on. And we know that the Most High, He created those things to be bottom dwellers and clean up, um, like clean up the ocean and stuff like that. Pigs, right? Pigs are, are made to be trash men. They're like they they meant to eat things that are diseased. That's why they don't have sweat glands. He designed it that way. So, so, um, right? The dietary laws keep you from um, dying. Right. Right. So you know, and another thing that a lot of church people say is, uh, well, if you break one law. You broke them all. So, what does that really mean? Like, what does that? That's a um. That's something that people use as scare tactics. Um, we're gonna actually. I got that scripture in there. We're gonna actually get to that. Um, but basically, it's like this. It's always that way. When you read Revelation, who are the people who don't get to go in the kingdom? The lawless, right? Those who. And it says one part. It says whoever um thinketh or maketh a what lie. So is that any, <laughs> it's still the exact same thing. So we're saying that, so in Revelations, you're seeing that even you don't even make it in the kingdom if you're a liar. So that's what? One of the least things. So he's telling you that if you break any things, of course, and I, I, we won't have to get to that scripture, but a, a better way to explain what, what Shaul was saying was, and what um, James was saying is, um, he was basically talking about people who do one thing and don't do the, and, and don't do the other. So they're like, um, give you an example. Somebody say, well, I keep the Shabbat, right? I keep the Shabbat, I keep the Shabbat. But they also um, hate their brother, right? So the scripture says for you to keep all the law. So if you hate your brother, you're still going to hell. That's the context of that scripture. People think, she'll put your shoes back on, man. Um, <laughs> people think that, go ahead, go ahead, you about to say? Because I think this is where I was. If you break one, you didn't keep any of like, that's no, that's exactly. Hold on a second, I gotta stop this. That's what I was, no, that's what I was always taught, you know, when I was in the church. Story, but the law was done away with, and even if you tried to keep the law, if you broke one, the smallest one, you're guilty of all of them, right? And it's still that way, it ain't nothing changed, right? So, again, if you um, so let's say she will sit down, sit down, all right. So let's say if um <laughs> this is crazy. All right. <laughs> so let's say if uh you say let, so let's go in the Christian concept. So we're gonna let's deal with the Christian concept. So Christian concept is the law is done away with, and so because the law is done away with, um you don't ha you don't necessarily have to walk righteously, right? Because um it's not held against you. So that's basically what he's saying. You because if you kept the law, you'll keep all of it. Yeah. Because the law is done away with, you don't have to keep all of it. Then they give you the 613 number and all this sort of stuff. So um, it's the exact same way. Even if, um, if, again, if you go back and read Revelations, anybody that commits sin, the scripture says that anybody who, um, who sins will not enter into the, into the kingdom. Right? They're saying the same thing. We, what's the definition of sin? Transgression of the law. So, again, going back to with, with the example, the reason why he said if you break one, you're breaking all of them. He's telling you that there is no little commandments. He's saying like, there's none that outweighs, or the one that there's not one that you can kind of just not keep and still kind of slip your way in. Right, right, right. So, and give you an example. I'm trying to figure out best way to explain this. So let's say if I came to you and you like, man, um, um, uh, you know, I can't stand um, make up a name, uh, Jeremy. I can't stand Jeremy because Jeremy, um, he's always he always stealing stuff. He always stealing stuff, right? And, you know, I ain't never stole nothing. But at the same time, uh, what do you do? You, uh, but yeah, you got three, you got 10 different baby mamas. But you're looking at him because, um, because he be stealing. Like, oh man, he steal all the time. Okay, I ain't never stole nothing. But again, so what he's trying to tell you is, okay, yeah, you, you ain't stole nothing, but you be committing fornication every night. If you do that, you still breaking out, you're going to go to hell. If you break the least of them, you still in sin. You, you understand what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. He's not... I mean, I, I'm about to get into that. I'm about to hurry up so I can get to that. But that's a good question. I'm about to get to that, all right? Just bear with me. So um, anyway, so the rest of this, it says this. Um, I hate vain thoughts, but I do love. But thy law, I do love. The art, my hiding place and my shield. I got to put that back up. I'm sorry, y'all. I 
I hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of Yah. You see that? So what he's trying to say is anybody that, that um don't want to keep the commandments, he's departing from them. He's separating themselves from them. Um, anybody that, 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 that practices lawlessness, okay? Um, hold on, let me skip down so we can get to that right quick. And then we get we get back. How far am I way? Okay, no, 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 we good, we good. All right. So I'm trying to answer all those questions and still get to this. But keep that, keep that, because we come back to that. Keep that in your head, because we got to move through the presentation. Um, because I don't want to lose some of these definitions. All right, all right. So let's go back to the lawlessness, right? This is also. Paul talking. So the whole concept is Paul said law, the law was done away with, right? This is Paul talking or Shaul talking. But we know that the law is what? Yeah. If a man do what? Yeah. You get it? All right, I'm keep going. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the what? Yeah. And the what? Yeah. And the what? Yeah. And, yeah. and the what? Yeah. And the what? Yeah. Keep going. See that? So what is he saying? Now you know most of these things are things I just told you about that are according to Torah, they're worthy of death. Right? So um that was the purpose. So you put these laws in here for those people. Okay? So somebody would say, Well, he he's saying that that means it was done away with, right? Revelations 22 verse 14. Blessed are they that keep what? That they might have what? Now, so if, if law is done away with, and if that's what he's saying in this verse, then the people who doing those things, they read that verse and they say, well, um, the law was made for the lawless, right? It was made for the sinners. So he done it away, he done away with that law because it was for the sinners. And now, you know, you're good. Somebody read that for me. Yeah, yeah. After, after it says tree of life. And they enter in through the gates into the city, for without a dog and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idol and idols and whosoever loveth and make it make it a lie. So even if you love a lie, you won't enter into the kingdom. Now you see what he says. <laughs> right, right. You, did everybody get what, I'm, get what I'm showing you? So he's telling you that the law was for the lawless. What it was to check, it was to, it was to get you back to be righteous. I'm, I'm gonna get to the term under the law. We're gonna talk about that in a second, right? Because we understand what that means too. Matter of fact, I explain it to you right now. All right. So when somebody says this is the difference between being under the law and being be, and keeping the law, guarding it, two different things. Guarding the law and being under the law. Okay. I'm gonna give you an example. Um, when you got up this morning, uh. Any of y'all, did y'all get up and think about um, uh, the law for manslaughter? Did y'all get up and think about the law for um, uh, incest? Did y'all get up and think about the law for, uh, I'm trying to figure out something else, for rape? Y'all didn't wake up thinking about that? So it didn't cross your mind, right? You know who think about that? The people that's, that, that's done it? It's on their mind, right? So once they've done it, and they've, they've done that sin. What do they do now? They go to the court and then they're judged. You see? So this is going back to the curse. The curse isn't the law. The curse is the penalty for breaking the law. You understand what I'm saying? So when you go to, when you go to the court and they arraign you. They say, we arraign to you what? What do they say? When they start rallying off the charges, what do they say? <laughs> Check this out. They say under the penal code, blah, 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 and under, blah, 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 and under, blah, 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 and under. Now, was he under those laws before he committed them? I mean, no, well, no, so like, because he, look, again, oh, if you haven't committed the committed. crime, you're not under it. Yeah. Do so you understand? So this is why the scripture says keep the law. Keeping the law and then being under the law. Two different things. Right? Keeping the law, like for, for instance, you never even thought about none of those. I, I probably, 
you probably ain't thought about rape all day. I'd probably be the first person to say the word rape in, in your ears today, right? Why? Because it's not even something that they don't apply to you because you're lawful. You understand what I'm saying? They call you an upright citizen. You are a law keeper, right? So you don't rape, you don't steal, you don't kill. That's in the natural. We're not talking about spiritual. We're talking about in America, right? So you're not under those things. But when you commit them, all of a sudden now you are under those things. And when you get judged, go back to judgment. You understand what I'm saying? These words. So when you get judged, you're judged under that. You, under that law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? Because it's for evildoers. You, you get it? You get it? I so I guess the way to kind of make it easy, I might be making too easy. But you know those scriptures where it says, and there's a lot of them, and it says that um, Satan will be under the church feet, be under uh, right, right, because he's not under them right now. Because he is sin, well, right? He's a representation of sin, he's right? The face of sin, whereas the Mashiach is the face of the law, right? So when you're under the law, you are under his foot, right? Which is not a place that you want to be, right? Right. You right. Know, you're under judgment. Under judgment. That's what right. under. Like again, yeah. we say the word under judgment. Man, they must be going on. They, <laughs> now they under judgment. That means you up under it. That is, it's not that the judgment didn't exist. The judgment been out there the whole time because it's written that it's going to happen. So the judgment always existed, but it, but you weren't under it until you committed the crime. You, you understand what I'm saying? So that's why he's talking about it's for the lawless. Just like right now, all them laws against, these are the same laws. It's funny because they say they can't keep the laws. These are the same laws that you have in, have in courtroom. It's like the same laws. People who, mur people who murder people, manslayers, you know, got manslaughter. That's a charge, right? Okay, um, uh, we're not whoremongers, but them, right? Bestiality, that's a charge. They could charge you for that, right? Um, they, they call it uh, animal abuse, right? Going on, on, on. these are actually perjured persons, people who tell tell lies on other people, right? Even that, divorce, I mean, it's not against the law, but it's like, what are you paying? You paying? <laughs> I mean, you, <laughs> right? Divorce is a thing, yeah. but it don't apply to you until you do it. Right. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Why? Because of that time, you 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 were in covenant. So that's what he's saying. He's saying being under the law. And he's, that's why he talk about these laws are for the lawless. That's why Shaul said that he didn't know what was righteous until he knew the law. Because the law taught him what was wrong. Everybody got me? So that's the reason. So anyway. so But you see in Revelations, it's telling you that the exact same people that he's talking about, them people won't get into the kingdom. Christianity is telling you that all the people going there because law is done away with. You understand? Again, bless all they that do what? Keep his commandments. Keep Torah that they may have right to the tree of life and may eat her into the gates of the city. For outside of that city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the whoremongers, the murderers, the violators, and whoever love or maketh a lie. So in that case, he's saying you ain't even got to make the lie. All you got to do is love that somebody told it. You ain't making it. So again, going back to if you break one, you don't break all of them. Right? You didn't commit. You didn't. Even that example, the best way to explain it. You love, you love lies. You love the, you, you love controversy. That's basically what it's saying. But you ain't, you ain't, you're not a whoremonger. You you've been married to your wife the whole time. You love her. You ain't killed nobody, right? You you you, you, ain't, you ain't even doing the on pagan days, right? Um, you're not, you know, you ain't committing witchcraft, you ain't doing none of those things, but you love you love controversy. So even though you've not you've not done all the other things, it's this one thing. That you did. And according to Revelations, you will not make it into the kingdom. Do y'all see that? Did I write that? It's, right? It's there. See, this is what people don't understand. You gotta look at the whole book. So the exact same people that um that Paul calls the lawless are the people that John said won't enter into the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. Isn't that what exact same group of people, right? So anyway, and we've done with well, I guess I better read this. All right. So this is why Keith, this is why Paul, I mean, Peter said this. Peter warned people about trying to read Paul's letters without understanding Torah. OK, and this is this is this quote. And I account for the long suffering of Yah salvation, even as our br beloved brother Shaul, uh, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written you. So he's saying that he's talking about his letters. You get this? He's talking about the letters that we just talked about. Ephesians, um, Corinthians, all the letters that he wrote. This is Kepha talking about Peter talking about Paul's letters as in all his epistles speaking in them these things which are easily understood. Hard to be understood. 
Okay. Now check out the people he that Kepha say that don't understand what Paul is talking about, which they are that are unlearned. That being up just about in Torah because they they studied the Torah at that time and unstable people who don't know Torah and people that love sin. You catch that? They do what? Rest. In other words, that word rest means to twist. You ever somebody hear anybody say they twist the scriptures? You ever heard somebody say that? They unstable rest as they do other scriptures. So he's telling you that not only do they twist his words, they twist everybody else's words, right? Until what? Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that you know these things, he's saying, like, look, I'm telling you, I'm giving you the heads up. Paul's letters are difficult to understand. We remember we had a, two, two teachings ago. I gave you all Acts 21, and I showed you in Acts 21, when Peter, when Kepha and John met with Paul, the first thing they told him, they said, man, look, look how many people, how many Hebrews keep the law and believe? And he said, look, he said, this is what they told him. He said, look, they need to know. That, that what they're saying about you is, is a lie. In other words, it says nothing. Whatever that means. He said, they didn't they need know the things they're saying about you, that you don't keep the law, and you see people that, that it's a lie. And he said, and he said this, he says, and you need to tell them that you what? Walk us orderly and keep the law. That's what Peter told them. That's what James told them. He said, all the elders of the church were there. Peter, Kepha, um, Yaakov, that's James, Yahakanan, John, they was all there. And they told him, said, look, said, tell, show them that you that you walk orderly and keep the law. That's what they told him. So Peter is telling you, y'all saying that he said don't keep the law. Peter is saying, look, he said, people that don't understand Torah, they twist his words. Because they because why? They un, they unstable. They're rather unlearned or they unstable. All right. All right, man. Good Lord. I'm probably going to get through most of this again tonight. But anyway. All right. So Romans um, 14, 14 through 15. And I know and I'm persuaded by Yahushua HaMashiach. That there is nothing clean, unclean of itself. So they're like, oh, nothing's unclean, right? That's what they say, right? But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, and thou walkest not charitably, destroy him not with thy meat, for whom Christ died. All right? Now, that's what he said in Romans, right? He says that, read it again, because people use this scripture, and they say, well, you can eat anything you want to eat, right? Because nothing's unclean. You can do whatever you want to do, because nothing's unclean. Because Paul said it. Paul said it. Right, so let's let's go over Paul's words. I'm gonna read it one more time, then we can go to Paul again. I know and I'm persuaded by Yahushua Hamashiach that there's nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it's unclean. That's what he said, right? Now let's go to Ephesians. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor what? <laughs> so how can it be unclean if nothing's unclean? Do you see? You know how this sound like Paul is got two heads, like he's absolutely conf, absolute confusion. One place he's saying there ain't nothing clean, unclean of itself. Next he's saying there ain't no no unclean person gonna make it into the kingdom, right? So what is he talking about? No covetous person, a man that's an eye later have what? Somebody read that last line for me. Right. So he's telling you this is Paul's words. Paul said it. <laughs> this is Paul's words. Paul's telling you. Y'all say, oh, you know, Paul said nothing's unclean of itself. Paul also said that no unclean person would enter into the kingdom of kingdom of, of, of Elohim. Not a single unclean person. What does unclean mean? Somebody tell me. All right. <laughs> Definitions. <laughs> unclean. For everybody out there who thinks it's going to spiritualize this to make it mean something else. Right? Isaiah 28 and verse 8. For all the table, I'm gonna give you the verse first, and I'm gonna give you the definition. Isaiah 28, verse 8. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness. So there is no place that is clean. In other words, it's unclean. The Hebrew word is tame, it means unclean, impure, ethically, and religiously, or ritually. Right? That's in the Hebrew. And I'm getting uh, Hebrew and Greek don't always match up. I'm gonna give you the Greek. Not cleansed. Unclean in a ceremonial sense. Do y'all see that? That which must be abstained from according to what? Say a little bit louder. So, unclean is things that need to be abstained according to Levitical law. So, what need to be abstained according to Levitical law? Unclean foods, unclean acts. Isn't that what it says in Leviticus? So that's what he meant when he said no unclean person. 
Paul said that no unclean person will enter into the kingdom of, of, of Elohim. Again, at the end, it says, in moral sense, unclean in thought and of life. That's the last usage of that word. So it's not the first usage of that word as you see it. And going back to the Hebrew, the Hebrew is unclean, impure, ethically, and religiously, ritually. Okay? So, saying all that to say, so it says, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, so you can't even covet and make it ahead, make it into, um, into uh, the kingdom. Now, what does that mean? So going back to what you said about earlier, when he said, if you offend one of them, you offend them all. Did everybody get it? Y'all y'all, y'all understand this now? That's what he's talking about. He's not saying that, oh, we're we going to do away with the whole law because if you, cause there's, a, there's some kind of like stipulation that you got to keep it. No. <laughs> what he's telling you is that if you going to walk in any kind of righteousness, we get into righteousness in a second. Next. Praise Yah, because I was hoping it went way down in, in the teaching. All right. So <laughs> saying that to say this. So he's telling you that in order for you to make it into the kingdom, you can have you can't practice any sin. It don't mean that you can't. Yes, you you, you never commit any sin. That's not what it's saying. Right. Because the scripture says, well, he's faithful and just to forgive. Right. So he's telling you that you can't practice sin. That means that you can't continue in sin. You know what he says? Um, what should I say then? Should we continue in sin? Yah forbid. Right? Should we what? Continue in lawlessness? Should we continue breaking the law? No. Right? We're supposed to repent from it. So, but the law is still there. Unclean person, covetous man, right? All that stuff. He says what? And again, this is the words of Paul. No unclean person. Nobody. So this is the reason why when you read Isaiah 66, Mashiach come back killing people that's eating pork. <laughs> Y'all believe me, go read it for yourself. Isaiah 66, he says when he returns, he says well, he's going he's gonna to return with fire and fury. And he says that, he says those who, who are in the groves behind one, one green tree, eating, eating swine's flesh and the abomination in the mouth will be consumed in the moment. That's what it says. So why is he doing that? Because according to Shaul, no unclean person can enter into the kingdom. There it is. Y'all get this? So the whole book, right? So, so everybody's like, well, you know, um, yeah, let's keep going. We ain't gonna finish this, but we're gonna at least get to a couple de couple more definitions. All right. So, so everybody like you know, um, uh, got to do away with the law, right? Because you had to keep the whole law. But then they talk about um being righteous, right? So they're like, yo, you know, you get all like, so you so you gotta so you can do anything. No, 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 you gotta be righteous. So you still gotta be righteous, even though you ain't supposed to keep the law. So the question would be. What is the definition of righteous? Religious acts. Religious traditions. That's what they think. They think being righteous is religious traditions. Or they call, no, they call that self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's technically what they call that. Um, so let's see what the definition means. Deuteronomy 4 verse 8. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments? Hold up. Why are they talking like this? If the law is evil, why are they saying that? Can you read this again. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so what? Righteous. As all this law. So what, what, why is he saying this? He's telling you that the law is what made you great. The law is the only thing that sets you apart from every other nation. Now what does set apart mean? Going back to the definitions. Holy. Set apart means holy. Kodesh. Set apart. So it's the law that sets you apart. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because we read in the precepts, thy law is holy. It is perfect. What? It what? It separates you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because the heathen hate the law. They always have. Right? They're still true to this day. <laughs> okay? And what nation is there so great to have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? Which I've set before you this day. So when did it change from being righteous to unrighteous? Everybody know? Somebody send me that scripture. I'm trying to figure out when the law will come unrighteous. But anyway, definition is, um, <laughs> yeah, Constantine forgot to put it in there. Um, I can't barely pronounce that, but um, it, Sadak, that's really how you pronounce it. But anyway, because Melchizedek, right? King of righteousness, right? In peace or whatever. That's basically what the name means, but Sadak, right? Oh, it means just. Uh oh! Lawful. So righteous means lawful? So, 
if righteous means lawful, can you be righteous without the law? See how much definitions change, change when you read actually know the definitions? Righteous means lawful. That's what it means. Now, I'm going to show you something. We, tell, we showed y'all that last time. Remember, I gave the scripture in Hebrew? Hebrew 12, 3, right? To the general assembly and to the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, to Elohim, um, the judge of all, and the spirits of just men made perfect. Now, and again, if y'all ain't heard this online, I'm going through this again. I'll give y'all the actual definitions. People think when they say, well, assembly, the word assembly is not assembly. The word is panegyrus. Funny word. Um, <laughs> but what it means is feasts, feast day. That's what it means. It says to the feast days and the assemblies. Man, that word assemblies, ecclesiastica or whatever. A gathering of citizens called out from their homes in some public place. Check this out. The assembly of the Israelites. Okay. Then it goes on, written in heaven, you know, the word heaven in the Hebrew is Shamayim, to Elohim, the judge of all, and the spirits of, check this out, just men. What is the word just men? Diakos, diakel, so my bad. It means righteous, observing, divine laws. In a wide sense, upright, righteous. They go, you word righteous, which means lawful, right? Virtuous. Keeping the commandments of Yah. Do y'all see that? So this way, it says just men. The word just men means the righteous men who keep the laws and commandments. Right? Made perfect. The word perfect means complete. We didn't talk about that before. Um, in, the, in the Greek, but even in the Hebrew, it means complete. It means whole. So y'all got me. So again, so if righteous means lawful, how are you going to be righteous without the law? I'll wait. Anybody? All right. So, we have about 10 more minutes. So, anyway, righteous, again, definition is lawful. Romans 3, verse 4 through 6. God forbid, yea, let God be true, or y'all be true, and let every man be a liar. For as, as it is written, thou mightst be justified in thy sayings. Now, how are you going to be justified in your sayings without keeping Torah because what it's, it's the most high who teaches you how to be righteous right okay <laughs> that I might be justified in our sayings and might overcome when thou art right because what when you you're judged by um the by the judges or authorities the lawyers right you know say saying to say this anyway we keep going but if our unrighteousness which is lawlessness command the righteousness of Yah right what shall we say? Is Yah unrighteous who take vengeance? Man, I just told you earlier. I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall Yah judge the world? So what do you say? I'm going to slow this down because it, it seems convoluted. But he said, if our unrighteousness, we say that if we if we under the law, we unrighteous. We under the curse, right? Okay. So it says, so this is what he's saying. If our unrighteousness, which is lawlessness, command the righteousness. In other words, saying, if my unrighteousness is righteousness, you get me? What am I gonna say? Is is Yah unrighteous, right? That take vengeance. So what is he saying? So if my unrighteous unrighteousness is righteousness, how can he judge me? How can he say to um the fornicators and adulterers and the liars, and anyone that makes the lie, anyone that's covet? How can he kick them out the kingdom if there is no law? He will be unrighteous. Do you get it? Because he's the, and I'm going to get to this other scripture, and it talks about he's a right, he, he judge righteously. That means lawfully. Because the only way he can punish you is if he said that you shouldn't do that. Going back to a father, a father who punishes his child for doing what he, doing what he told him to do is an abusive child. I mean, abusive father. You know what I'm saying? He's an unrighteous father. Everybody got me? So Shaul was telling you, he says, if my unrighteousness is, um, is righteous, like, how can how can y'all judge him? How can he judge me? He can't judge me. He can't, he can't say anything to me. So <laughs> he can't judge the world either. He can't judge the heathen. Why? Because the heathen are wicked. Why? Because they're outside of Torah. So how is he going to punish them? <laughs> how are they wicked? Because the only reason why we know it's wicked is because the Most High said it was wicked. <laughs> you see? 
how this is the again this is the covering that covers the whole earth this is the woman in the ephah it's wickedness you know again it's do what thou wilt that's what i was trying to get to earlier alistair crowley had this whole seance and he channeled this demon yeah he, he, he again he got this thing called the um the i forget what he called it yeah he had to do what thou wilt shirt on yeah, yeah. right so um he got this book they call it the satanic bible but alistair crowley was um the most famous Satanist of all time. So after he had this whole seance and all this other stuff, um, okay, yeah, after he had this whole seance and everything, he challenged the spirit that supposedly came and spoke to him, named Iowas. Now Iowas gave him this. He started um, doing what they call automatic writing. Automatic writing is when somebody gets possessed with a demon and then they start writing whatever the demon is telling them to do. So he wrote the whole book, right? So he wrote the whole book of it's like a book of spells, of black you know black magic and all that kind of stuff. Um, possessed, and I, I'll tell him all the things that I always told him to do. Well, I was chief commandment was this: is what he said, "Do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law." In other words, do what you want to do. Right. So the law that he had was to what? Don't do what the Most High says. In other words, don't do what the law says. Do what you want to do. And that's what churches teaches you. They teach you like, oh, well, you can't keep his law. So as long as you believe that he exists, mm -hmm. go do what you want to do. You cover it. You You're good. You understand what I'm saying? So it's eight o'clock. Um, man, I thought we were going to finish the thing. Man. We did not. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we got through lawful. We got um, got a definition of lawful, right? We got, I mean, not lawful. We got the definition of righteous, which is lawful, right? We got the definition of, of iniquity, which is um, which is uh, lawlessness, right? Um, what else we get a definition for? Sin. Sin. It's transgression of the law. And so now when you go back and read these things, put the actual definition in the sentence, and it's going to make sense, right? Like, we didn't get to 1 Corinthians 6. I'm going to read y'all something real fast. Um, we're gonna get to the robes of righteousness. I was hoping we we're gonna do that today. We didn't. Um. All right, so we're gonna read this real fast and we get this. All right, Psalms um nine verse eight. He shall judge the world in righteousness. Remember what you talked about that? Why? Because it's gonna be lawful. Why? Because of wickedness. He only the Most High only punishes people for wickedness. He don't punish people. Um, just to be punishing people, right? And shall minister judgment unto the people in right uprightness. Remember, uprightness is going back to that word we saw even saw in the Greek, which means just men, those who keep the laws in the in, in the um in the statutes, right? Psalms um ninety six verse thirteen. Before Yah, he cometh, for he he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with what righteousness, which means lawfulness, right? And his people with his truth. Now remember, what is the definition of truth according to, according to the scripture? He said, what is truth? The law is truth. That's what the scripture says, all right? Psalms um, 98 verse 9. Before Yah, he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness he shall judge the world and the people with equity. So he sees, what he's showing you is that he would never punish anybody um, unrighteously. Right. He's a law. He's a he's a law giver. Matter of fact, the scripture says that he's the law of justice and judgment, meaning that everything he, he's all about balance. Right. So he's not. And again, he's not. He says not his will to any should perish. They all come to but all come into repentance. Right. But the people that perish is, again, talking about it's the lawless. Why? Because they reject the commandment. What it says, it says when you reject the commandment, I forget your children. Another scripture, it says that the ones who um, who hate the commandments. He says they prayer is abomination to him. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because they refuse instruction. Well, going back to um Proverbs, it says a fool despise instruction. Right? Uh, a foolish person is somebody that's um that's reckless, right? That's lawless. You see what I'm saying? Uh, if you say somebody's fool, they like, man, you you um, old people say, man, they a plum fool. <laughs> they just do anything that comes to their mind. You see what I'm saying? They're not lawful, righteous, right? So anyway. So I hate that, man, because I asked some other stuff I want. James, I can't wait to be getting James. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to that. Guess you got to do that on Shabbat.
I bet with me five minutes. I will want I want to show y'all this when we get to this. Go watch online. Um the Moray by homie uh Morris Williams. Go read the steps, the covenants continue steps to an eastern covenant. You need to watch that video. Right? You watched it? Yes. You gotta watch it. I don't know if you said it or not. Very last thing I'm gonna say. All right. So one he, in the whole picture, I'm just taking a snippet from it. He's talking about in the, the ancient Eastern covenants. Now everything we do in the West is, you know, it's Westernized. Western, Western, the Western mind they don't believe in covenants. They don't believe in anything. But here we go. The ancient Eastern covenants, um, the two parties when they make a covenant, and when they would come together, they, they would exchange robes. So I'll give you my robe. If I'm making a covenant with you, I'm gonna take off my robe. I'm gonna give it to you, right? And the person that gives the robe gives the authority um, of the other person as if, as if he was the same person. So if I'm a king, I'm going to give you my robe. Now you've received kingship. We all we're both kings together. You have the same authority. You understand what I'm saying? So I gave you these pictures. That's now that's called the masters. Right. They do. They give you the green jacket. Right. They give you your robe. And then all of a sudden now you you consider to be one of the masters. Right. And then right there, you see, that's that's um, a Supreme Court judge nomination. So they put the robe on them and then they would they, they receive what authority. Right. So to give you all this real fast, Daniel nine, it says this. I beheld to the thrones were cast down in the ancient of days. Check this out. Whose garment was what? So it's showing you that his garment that he wear is white. Now check this out now. And his hands of the head white pure wool. We know he's you know he will hear brother, right? <laughs> and his throne was like a fiery flame, his wheels is burning fire. Check this out now. Um, so Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in Yah. My soul should be joyful, my Elohim, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has what? Covered me with the robe of righteousness. The robes of exchange. You in covenant? It was my robe. Now I'm giving you. I, I'm giving you my robe. Now you're gonna have my authority, my power, right? Because if I made a covenant with you, we kings will give you my garment. Then now you you've received that same kingship. You've received the authority to operate in my behalf, right? So now he's giving you the same robes, right? As a ragum deck of for ornaments and blah blah blah. blah. Keep going. Matthew, so now let's go to the quote unquote New Testament. Matthew 28 verse three. His countenance was as lightning, and his raiment. This is an angel. His raiment was what? White as snow, right? So going back to that white garment. Now check this out. Revelation 6, verse 11. And white robes were given to every one of them. You see that? That's the covenant. I'm giving you my, I'm giving you my authority. I'm giving you my kingship. I'm giving you, you my ability. Right? And it was said to them that they should rest for a little season. Their fellow servants also and their brother. And they were killed as they were um, should be fulfilled. Last verse, and we, um, we're going to shalom it out. All right, Revelation 4, verse 4. four. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon them I saw four and twenty elders. How were they clothed? You see that? So they received those robes too. That's why they were able to receive eldership. So they're in a, a place of authority. So now we are receiving them same robes, those white robes, the same white robe that Elohim has on. So now you 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 gonna be his authority in the earth. You're gonna be almost like vice regent or whatever. You 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 like his his picture in the earth. So these things are given to Israel. So Israel then what? They receive that place in the earth. They still under under the under Elohim, but they ruling in the earth because Elohim rules the earth. They've received those garments, they came into the covenant. Right? But again, what the scripture says, it says the only people that did that is those who have keep the commandments. Right? And had a testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach, which means they've been born, they were baptized in the water in the name, and they received the Ruach. Right? And they walked in the law, statutes, and commandments. Right? So, saying all that to say this. Remember, it's, Mo, it's Aaron's sons who received those garments. And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, thou shalt make them girdles and bonnets, thou shalt make for them for glory and beauty. And thou shalt put upon Aaron. And his brother and his sisters and sons are with them. And I shall anoint them and consecrate them. See that right there? And sanctify them that they may minister me in the priest's office. Remember the scripture says you're going to be a what? A holy nation and they what? So you're taking on that garment. The most high is a what? He's a high priest. So now you've become a priest in the earth. To who what? To, to the world. To the nations. 
But you can't be a priest without no law. Priest of what? What are you going to be a priest of? <laughs> right? Every priesthood has a system that they go by. A, a system of laws and commandments. Any priesthood. You're going to be a voodoo priestess? You got certain things you got to do. You want to be a, a priest in, 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 in Satan or whatever? You got to do stuff. Yeah, I think, um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe this is a topic for it should be a topic by itself, but royal priesthood, when I would hear that in the church setting, it was used as to, like, give you confidence about whatever it is that you're in. It was so individualized and so spiritualized right. that there was really no, it was basically saying, this is what, this is how God sees you. You're, you're so important that you're, you're part of this royal priesthood and, you know, um, just have faith in all these things, but no, in the, the reality, you have a responsibility to receive the truth um, and give it to the the nations, spread it to the world. That's our responsibility. I'm not, yes, as Israel's responsible, but even though even their companions once right. they cross over, then their response, you're taking on that role, that responsibility to be a royal priesthood to teach them, teach the other nations truth right you know um and then you enjoy the benefits of it in eternity i mean you can get it now but right the great uh, of the ultimate reward yeah and that's and, and that's what i'm getting at and we're gonna we ain't nowhere to close to finish we got more definitions to go through um so uh on a shabbat we're gonna finish it um but yeah um that's what it's boiled down to if you in order for you to be a priesthood you got to have you got to have a, a you got to have a priesthood you can't be a priest of nothing yeah. right yeah. so it's the laws so your purpose is to be a priest to the nations so that's why your covenant is tied to that it's your job if you don't do your job you get fired that's why scripture says that what it says when the salt has done what lost its savor it is good for nothing but to be what cast out and tried under foot of men you're useless at that point. You lawless, you're useless. And you're going to be tried now. You'll be tried now and, and killed by the nations. Right? Right. So, anyway, we finished them definitions on the Shabbat. Shalom, everybody. Um, and we'll see you then.